Chem 30. This is our first lesson in the Acids and Bases Unit. This is Introduction to Acids and Bases. In this lesson, we will review the Arrhenius and Modified Arrhenius theory of acids and bases, which was previously learned in Chemistry 20. We will then move forward with the bronsted lowry theory of acids and bases. This will be our focus in Chemistry 30. This will involve conjugate acids and bases, and we will finish with one example. First up, uh, reviewing the Arrhenius theory of acids and bases. This theory states that acids produce a hydrogen ion in water. What we are seeing in this chemical reaction is our acid HCl is ionizing and breaking apart into its ions when placed in water, forming the products H plus and Cl minus. In the Arrhenius theory, bases produce a hydroxide ion in water. Bases are ionic compounds in the Arrhenius theory, and they dissociate in water to produce ions, uh, Na plus and OH minus in this example. There were many problems with the Arrhenius theory of acids and bases. The most notable is that it cannot explain substances such as NH3, which act like a base, but they cannot dissociate into OH- in water. That brings us to the modified Arrhenius theory, which can better explain acids and bases. In the modified Arrhenius theory, all acids produce hydronium when they react with water. Very important to note that all acids now react with water. In our chemical equation, we can see HCl, our acid, reacting with water. HCl loses a hydrogen and gives it to water, forming our products H3O plus and Cl minus. In the modified Arrhenius theory, strong bases remain the same and still dissociate to produce hydroxide. This is the same chemical reaction from the previous slide. Weak bases in the modified Arrhenius theory produce hydroxide when they react with water. Again, weak bases react with water. Our chemical equation shows NH3, our base, reacting with water. Water loses a hydrogen and gives it to NH3, resulting in our products OH- and NH4+. Still, the modified Arrhenius theory had problems. One of the most common errors was that it could not explain Ampiproteric substances that can produce both H plus and OH minus in water. An ampiproteric substance is a substance that can act as either an acid or a base. That finally brings us to the Bronsted Lowry theory of acids and bases. This is the theory that we will focus on in Chemistry 30. It is a more complete theory of acids and bases. In the bronsted lowry theory, acids lose a proton or an H plus ion to another species in solution. They are called proton donors. Bases receive a proton or H plus ion from another species in solution or water. They are called proton acceptors. An acid-base reaction occurs 
when an H plus ion is transferred from an acid to a base. This reaction forms a new acid and a new base in the products. In our chemical reaction, we can see HNO2, which is our acid, and therefore our base is CO3 2 minus. Our acid donates its hydrogen to the base, resulting in the two products. Now NO2 minus is our new base, and our new acid is HCO3 minus. That brings us to conjugate pairs. A pair of substances that differ only by a proton or hydrogen are called conjugate acid-base pairs. The acid is on one side of the reaction and the base is on the other. In our chemical equation, we can see HA, which is a general formula for an acid, is reacting with water, H2O, which is going to be our base. Again, the acid will transfer a hydrogen to the base, resulting in A-, minus, which is our new base, and our new acid is formed, H3O+. Our first conjugate pair is HA and A-. Minus. HA is our acid, on the other side of the chemical equation is our base A-. They differ only by a hydrogen. Our other conjugate pair in this reaction is H2O, which is our base, and on the other side of the equation is our acid H3O+. Again, they differ only by a hydrogen. It is important to note, the stronger the acid, the weaker its conjugate base will be. So if HA is a very strong acid, that means that its conjugate base, A minus, will be very weak. And the opposite is true. The weaker the acid, the stronger its conjugate base will be. How to determine conjugate acid and base pairs in a chemical reaction. Step number one, determine which reactant is the strongest acid and label it as the donor. In order to do this, we have to use our table of acids and bases on page eight and nine of the Chemistry 30 data booklet. This step will be shown in example number one. Step number two, once you have determined which reactant is the strongest acid, the other reactant is then going to be the base. Label it as the acceptor. Number three, Determine the products of the chemical reaction. Remember, the acid donates a hydrogen to the base. Step four, label the products as a donor and acceptor for the reverse reaction, meaning label the products as the new acid and the new base. And then finally, step number five, connect the conjugate acid and base pairs. Remember, conjugate pairs differ only by a hydrogen. Example number one, complete the following reaction and determine the conjugate acid and base pairs of the following chemical reactions. Pause the video and attempt this example. In our first chemical equation, we have to determine which reactant 
is the strongest acid. And to do so, we need to use the strength of acids and bases table in our Chemistry 30 data booklet. On page 8 and 9 of the Chemistry 30 data booklet, there is the relative strengths of acids and bases table. Acids are found in the second column. The strongest acids are found at the top of the table. Note the six strong acids are found right here at the top of the table. Therefore, the higher the acid is on the table, the stronger the acid. In our third column, we have bases. They are going to be the exact opposite. The strongest base, OH minus, is found at the bottom of the table. Therefore, the lower the base is on the table, the stronger the base. It should also be noted that some species can be found in either column of the table. For example, H2O is a very weak acid on the table. It can also be found in the base column and can act as a very weak base. Substances that appear in both columns are amphiproteric, meaning they can act as an acid or a base. Moving forward with example number one and find the strongest acid in our reactants. We should start at the top of the table and work down until we see one of the reactants. Our strongest acid on the table is HSO3 minus. It will be the acid in our chemical equation. Using the Chemistry 30 data booklet, it has been determined that our strongest acid in the first reaction is HSO3 minus. Therefore, the other reactant is the base, H2PO4 minus. To determine the products, we have to transfer a hydrogen from the acid to the base, forming the products SO3 2 minus and H3PO4. H3PO4 is our new acid and SO3 2 minus is our new base. We can then connect the conjugate acid and base pairs. These are the substances that differ only by a hydrogen. Our first pair is HSO3 minus and SO3 2 minus. Our other pair is H2PO4 minus and H3PO4. Something else to consider in this chemical reaction is the charge on each substance. What we need to consider is every hydrogen is a plus one charge. So if you gain a hydrogen, you're gaining a positive charge. If you lose a hydrogen, you are losing a positive charge. Notice how the charge on HSO3 minus is minus one. When we lose the hydrogen, we are losing a positive charge. Our new charge is now going to be SO3 2 minus because we lost a hydrogen. In the other example, H2PO4 had a charge of 1 minus. Since we gained a hydrogen, we gained a positive charge, bringing the overall charge of H3PO4 to zero. In our second chemical reaction, we first have to use the Chemistry 30 data booklet to determine which is our strongest acid 
in the reactants. We must work our way down the acid column to find the strongest acid in our reactants. NH3 was not in the acid column. Therefore, the only possible acid in our reactants is water. It will now be the acid in our chemical reaction. It has been determined that the only and therefore strongest acid of the reactants is H2O. Therefore, our other reactant, NH3, is our base. Again, we are going to transfer a hydrogen from the acid to the base, forming the products NH4 plus and OH minus. OH minus will be the new base and NH4 plus will be the new acid. We can then finally connect the conjugate acid and base pairs. Our first pair is NH3 and NH4 plus and our other pair is H2O and OH minus. Again, notice how the charges of the two products are different. NH3 was originally a neutral charge of zero. Once it gained a hydrogen to form NH4, it became plus one. H2O was originally a neutral substance with a charge of zero. Once it lost a hydrogen, it lost a positive charge, now becoming OH minus. Moving forward, we will predict Bronsted-Lowry reactions.